Canada is more than just mountains and lakes. Join us this week as we uncover the maritime province of Nova Scotia on our journey to drive our little British camper van all the way to Argentina. Welcome to episode four. Odor mosquito. <laughs> Odor deet. Odor deet. Good morning and welcome to Kedji National Park. We have finally left the coast and made it about an hour inland into the interior to Kedji National Park. Sorry, the river was weeing. <laughs> to stop. It's a really special national park and a historic site too. Um, the Mi'kmaq people, the First Nations people of Nova Scotia, have been caretakers of this land for thousands of years now. There's actually ancient rock carvings called petroglyphs dotted all the way through the national park, but you have to go on guided tours to go and see them. And unfortunately, they were all fully booked, so we couldn't do them. You can also have a go at making some birch bark canoes. You can do like, like make arrowhead flints and stuff so much to do here and there are loads of hiking trails so that is what we're doing first thing this morning getting out on the trails seeing the interior of Nova Scotia we have been on the coast pretty much this whole way so yeah it should be fun the trail that we're on is taking us through some old growth hemlock forests now apparently old growth hemlock forests are extremely rare and this one has the park's highest level of protection. Even the path that we're going to be on is designed in a way to not impinge on like the forest floor or the roots or anything like that. This part of the forest has suddenly turned very dark. There's absolutely no undergrowth, no shrubs. This is a transition zone apparently where young hemlocks are growing up alongside older hardwood trees and the hemlocks create this like feathery canopy at the top. Cause I was looking up thinking, these aren't like pine trees, but yeah, they create like a feathery canopy, it stops the sunlight coming through and the needles that they drop form a really acidic soil. So nothing can really grow in the shade and in the acidic soil. So that's why it almost looks completely barren on the forest floor here. We've been walking through oak and maple groves and aspen groves, which are full of life and greenery. And you could just walk into here and it's just like, almost looks like a dead forest. Wow, this is amazing. So now we're in the old growth hemlock forest. Some of the hemlocks here are 400 years old. You'll notice that we're walking on a boardwalk because the hemlocks can grow so big um, they need their entire root system to support themselves so any damage to their roots at all can really affect the trees so we've got to stick to the boardwalk down here but this is amazing it's like something from lord of the rings or something these massive massive trees So I absolutely love plants in a bit of a geeky way and there's so much information here about the moss and about the dead branches and Ben keeps reminding me not to bore you all and otherwise this vlog is going to be like an hour long because I will just tell you about every little thing <laughs> that is happening in this forest. She scratched herself under her belly. Oh, every. So we are just checking for ticks. Just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who has commented telling us to be careful of ticks around here in Nova Scotia. We are aware of the tick problem. We have um, a tick remover that has a little tick identifier card with it. Lyme disease is a massive problem here and there's a certain tick that carries Lyme disease. Um, these guys are also on Brevecto flea and tick treatment which they've been on since they were pups back in the UK. And if you remember a couple of videos ago, we went to the vets to get rabies, uh, river, a rabies jab. We also got these guys topped up on some Brevecto. So they are very much anti-ticked up. We check them every time I've been out on walks. We try not to let them rummage around in long grass or bushes. And um, yeah, we are very aware of the tick and Lyme disease problem. Check ourselves as well. We did speak to the vet about getting a Lyme disease vaccination, but he said because we're here for just a few weeks, it isn't really worth it, especially if we're checking them all the time and I've got Brevecto. He said that should be more than enough. So. Thank you to everyone that's commented and we, yeah, now I need to uh, check these guys after that walk. 
Kejimakujik is the Mi'kmaq word for little fairies and is also the full name of this wild national park, home to old growth forests, rare wildlife and over a thousand years of indigenous Mi'kmaq history. Today, the Mi'kmaq culture and heritage is kept alive through workshops, storytelling, guided tours, and by the many trails that let you experience the magic of this landscape for yourself. Well, welcome to Snake Lake. It is so hot today, I've got to go in for a dip. I haven't brought my swimmers with me, shall I just go in? Go, go, go. Now I've just got to drip dry. <laughs> I'm not going to have Oh, what an amazing day that was in Kedja National Park. We could have easily stayed there for three or four days. You can actually camp in the park. Um, we haven't because we just really haven't got the time, but we could easily have spent days there. There is so much to do. It is so wild and beautiful and the lakes there are just, oh, it's honestly, absolutely loved it. We are now back. Can you guess where? Our favorite Digby Visitor Centre car park where we've been for like the past three weeks. It has just been, it's the perfect location for everywhere that we wanted to go, whether it was, you know, down to the French shores, over to Briar Island, and now down to Kedji. But tomorrow we are leaving here and heading north, and that is it. We are leaving this area for good. But you may notice I'm on my own, and that is because somebody is very excited to be setting up the Starlink. Have finally been using our Starlink, because where we are is very, uh, the mobile signal's not great. So we brought out the Starlink and it has been amazing. It's literally like having broadband at home. I think our, our download speed was 220 meg yesterday and yeah. our upload was just under 100. And there's a stow feature. So when you take it off and once pack it away, you set it to stow and it closes up and everything shuts down and so you can fit it back in the box. So that's what I'm doing now but we're going to be transporting it around in the box it came in, but you can also buy a transporting um, like a travel case, case. Yeah, a travel, case. travel case, but they're not being shipped out until mid-September. So we're going to wait till they're back in stock and we're going to get one because it'll be so much better because this box is just going to get destroyed. But we've been using Starlink for a couple of days and it's amazing. So we will keep you posted on it as a win. This is amazing, isn't she? What did you see? I've just found, so it's on automatic. It says automatically detect snow and heat up when needed. Keep warm to better resist snow build up this. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm actually gonna set that to off so it doesn't have to, sorry, problem with curve while saving. <gasps> oh, look at that. I'm, I'm literally, that's amazing. So as well as the Starlink, we are still using our Rent and Connect. This is a global SIM that we've used for the past year. It's yeah, like a little Wi-Fi box here, which has a SIM and it just connects to the like closest available cell network. It works across borders. Absolutely amazing piece of kit. We love this. And this is like our main internet. The Starlink is perfect for when we're stationary somewhere and we just have no cell service, which out in Canada, it can be a bit patchy. We are officially leaving Digby this morning. That's it. We are not going to be coming back here. Um, we had quite a little crowd last night in our little car park. There were four of us all like tucked away and two tents. So yeah, had a little had a little get together here in the Digby car park to see us off. So today we are going to go and head through the Annapolis Valley. It's this area that is very like agricultural, rolling fields, meant to be very, very pretty, lots of farms. Quite different to where we've been in Nova Scotia so far. So looking forward to it. Farewell. Digby car park. You've been, you've been a good one. We are currently on a mission to find a water fill up. Surprise, surprise. But this one is thanks to Ian who commented and let us know that there is a RV dump station, a water fill up behind a place called Greenwood Mall. 
so we're on a mission to find that now and also just behind Greenwood Mall a couple of you have recommended that we check out a waterfall called Crystal Falls now it doesn't seem to have clear directions to it apparently people get lost trying to get there so so that we don't have another repeat of the logging road incident from a couple of weeks ago I found this blog and the woman on it has like in detail described the route to get there and I think it starts from pretty much where we're getting the water from so we're on a mission to find water and then we're on a mission to find some waterfalls it's like a proper little treasure hunt this morning RV dump station well, if it's a proper signposted place it should be fairly easy to find yeah we just saw a sign that said RV dump station and it's behind the mall oh there it is free RV station oh, free RV station this away Excellent. Our RV dump station around the corner. Ah. Where's that? There's another sign. It is like a little treasure hunt. Water success, thank you so much Ian. As much as we love hearing people's like recommendations of things to do, water fill up point recommendations are top of it. It is a very like high want and need. Yeah, yeah, especially stuff like this, we would never have found this without some locals help, so thank you so much for that. Directions to Crystal Falls, right, go past the Greenwood Mall and across the from Walmart. Turn right at the depot onto Rock Knot Road. Can you see Rock right, Knot so Road? Rock Street closed, look. Oh. Oh. Well, well, that was foiled at the first hurdle. The, the road is closed. Go across, so after Rock Notch Road, we go across a one lane bridge and come to a T in the road. Yep. Turn left. Yep. Take an immediate right onto a dirt road. Okay, so. Right, this is the red bar. This is, so we would have come from this direction. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on this dirt road. It says, continue on this road until you come to another T in the road. Then turn left. Okay, so. We'll cross a one lane bridge. Wow. Okay, we'll cross the one lane bridge. Then it just says park on the top, of, go to the top of the hill and then park along the road. Okay. So now what? A massive wrong turn somewhere. And we've surprise, gone, surprise. Yeah, and we've gone on a massive detour. Can you hear the wind in the trees? I'm so far away from wow. This was 100% worth it. We were wow. going to turn back. Look at that. It's beautiful. Somebody's loving it already. Are you going to go for it? Yeah. I've got no towel, I've been swimming and it's raining. How am I going to dry? Not very well, that's for sure. I'll do a river and scout. <laughs> this is such a pretty drive. Rather than um, along the coast where it's like fishing villages and seafood places and thick pine forests. We and lobster pots. And lobster pots. There are just vineyards, orchards, farm shops everywhere. It's really, like such a different landscape to where I've been driving through before and really, really pretty. Okay, well, the rain has stopped play for today. We have been driving up towards Cape Split, which is a really, really famous hike that we can't leave this area without doing. So we're gonna park up here tonight and we've ended up coming here a lot earlier than we had planned because it is just torrential rain everywhere. Mm, we were gonna head to the winery. Yeah, we're gonna head to a winery. We're gonna head to Halls Harbor, but it's they're just not worth seeing in this kind of rain. So this trailhead car park is absolutely beautiful. We're just surrounded by pine trees big forest here and then the sea just behind us. Good morning birthday girl. Thank you. It's my birthday. And you got a nice little crown on. I know, Brian bought me this. Your birthday girl. I've got to wear it all day today apparently, including on the hike. 
Well, you don't have to wait on the hike if you don't want to, because I can imagine it being quite uncomfortable oh. hiking first. But you can, you can if you want. Oh, more yeah. <laughs> Okay, we were doing like this. Summer. Summer. <laughs> ready to go. Who remembers my birthday last year? We were in Greece. We, in fact, we had just arrived in Greece. It was the day after that chaotic ferry crossing from Italy. Oh, it was, I wasn't it? That was a whole year ago. Here you go. Oh, don't let your salad touch mine. Oh, shut up. There you go. A little breakfast picnic. We've got some pastries. We've got some nuts. Oh. Cereal balls. Okay. I don't know where we think we're going. We're going to be like. That's a lot of food. Every day expedition. Yeah, but it's my birthday. That's very true. There's two cookies. Oh, I might as well just eat them now. <laughs> I'll have one now. Right, it's this way. Let's go. Ah, oh, great, look at that. Be careful there. So this is one of the most iconic hikes that you can do in Nova Scotia. We've left pretty early, so it's very, very quiet on the trail, which is really nice. Because obviously you saw it rained so much last night, it feels like a tropical rainforest in here. This first part of the hike is through thick, thick wood and there's ferns everywhere and it's just everything's dripping with water. There's streams running across. It feels really lush, just like a rainforest. It's awesome. We're going to go and stop at the cafe. <laughs> cafe down here, cafe. Cheska's Picnic Cafe. Cafe. Ben's heavy rucksack. Look wow. at that. That is beautiful. This is Lobster Hole Look Off. Look at that. So is that the Bay of Fundy then? Yeah, this is the Bay of Fundy and these, the tide comes all the way up here. Wow, look at this. The Cape Split hike takes you across a dramatic and forested peninsula that's been carved by the world's highest tides. If you time your hike well, you can see and hear the dangerously strong tidal currents roaring away 200 foot beneath you. Having a little birthday picnic. Amazing, amazing views out over the bay. We've made it back. Just admit, never underestimate the power of an ice lolly. Happy birthday, Miss Jessica. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> okay, so seeing as the sun has come out today, we have got much, much better views of the Annapolis Valley that we're driving through. It's really, really pretty. Now, for some of you might be thinking that, you know, why the hell have you done a 13 kilometer hike on your birthday? You should be relaxing. Hopefully, this next spot makes up for that a little bit. Okay, so I bet when you think of Canada, you don't think of wine. But this part of Nova Scotia has got loads of vineyards. This one looks particularly interesting because it's all organic and biodynamic. So, we're gonna go and have a taste. The vines that grow here are carefully planted and harvested according to the cycles of the moon and the tides, with minimal intervention, free from pesticides and chemicals. They produce pure and beautiful wines that were far too delicious for a weekday afternoon. Cheers. Ben is really excited because since he's been in Canada, his dream is to see the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and there's a wedding happening right now, and one of them is a... one of them. As in, in their like ceremonial They're in outfits. their like ceremonial or their, their outfits. And they've just all walked past. They haven't been on horses, so I don't think it's real yet. He's not actually seen what he wants to see. This vineyard is absolutely beautiful. You can see all of the grapevines just going down the hill here, out onto the sea. I don't know what I'm saying, I'm just talking shit. Chess has drank literally <laughs> five glasses of wine in really... the space of 15 minutes. No, it's not five glasses. I'm carrying her back to the van. Ben doesn't really like wine. In fact, Ben doesn't really like wine at all. So, I have most of the samples in mine. Pretty much had all the samples, yes. <laughs> If you watched last week's video you'll have seen that we had to drive back to Halifax to come and pick up a parcel. Now on route to Halifax we stopped off at a pizza place called Big Mike's Pizza. 
is where we are tonight because it was absolutely amazing. It's a very unassuming little pizza joint. We just kind of stumbled across it as it was the kind of nearest place that was open and it's run by this awesome Lebanese woman and the pizza is one of the best pizzas I've ever had. So that is going to be my birthday meal tonight. It's um, some pizza from Big Mike's Pizza and if you're in this area of Canada I would highly, highly recommend dropping by. It's in Kentsville. Kentsville we're Kentsville, in, yeah. Kentsville, yeah, near Wolfville. And yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, okay, I'll let you know. Honestly, she is the nicest woman ever. <laughs> Babe, that piece is massive. Oh my god. Happy. That is unreal. Happy birthday, baby. Hands down, this is the best pizza place like I've ever been to. Mm. That was amazing. These guys look exactly how I feel right now. <laughs> Why don't you close your eyes for two seconds and we'll round off the day. Happy birthday to you. Happy, oh, <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Cheska. Happy birthday to you. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> now they ate, firstly they didn't have number threes, so I couldn't get three, 33. Oh, okay, yeah. But you are number one to all three of us. So oh, thank you. Here's make a wish. Make a wish. Oh, you blew the wax on me! <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>